Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is sub uh breast abscess, you know. And before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And the link for the website is just below this video in the description area. So you can click the link to visit the website. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel as well. Thank you. And I come to the topic, what is sub uh, area breast abscess, you know. You know, this is one type of the breast infection that uh, can occur in uh, non-lactating uh, women, you know, uh, in a sub area breast abscess. So this is known as sub area breast abscess. And uh, these abscesses are uh, infected lumps uh, that occur just uh, under the areola, you know, which is uh, the colored skin around the nipples, you know. So that colored part is known as areola, you know. And uh, if the abscess is in that part and the woman is non lactating, it's known as sub areola breast abscess. And uh, this abscess is a swollen area in the body that is filled with pus, you know. And pus is a liquid filled with the dead white blood cells, you know. And the swelling and the pus are due to local infection. And the local infection is where the bacteria invade your body at a certain point and remain there, you know. And the bacteria do not spread to other parts of your body in the local infection, you know. And uh, in the past, you know, these infections were called like uh, uh, lactiferous uh, fistulas, you know, or maybe the uh, just cause disease. And uh, after the doctor who first wrote about this one, you know, so there was a doctor just cause, you know, so that's why it was known as just cause disease, you know. Yeah, but now it's no more commonly known as sub or breast abscess. You know. Now, the next thing is what are the symptoms? Well. When a sub uh, like um, uh, uh, error or breast abscess first develops, you know, you may notice some pain in that uh, uh, areola, you know. And this will likely be lump under the skin and some swelling of the uh, nearby skin, you know. And uh, pus may drain out uh, of the lump if uh, you push on it or if uh, uh, it's cut open, you know. And if it's, love, if it's not treated, you know, uh, the infection can start to form the fistula. And the fistula is an abnormal hole from the duct out of the, out to the skin, you know. And if the infection is severe enough, the nipple, uh, like, inversion can occur, you know. So this is when the nipple is, uh, like, uh, drawn into the breast tissue rather than popping out, you know. And uh, you may also have uh, a fever, or maybe general feeling of uh, illness, you know, which is a sign of uh, infection. Uh, the next thing is what are the causes of uh, sub or abscess, you know, or known as SBA, you know. You know, this abscess is caused by a blocked duct or the gland inside the breast, you know. And this blockage can lead to an infection under the skin. And uh, it's usually occur in the younger or the middle-aged women you know, who are not currently lactating which means they are not breastfeeding you know and some risk factors uh, may include like uh, nipple piercing you know uh, smoking and uh, diabetes so these are the risk factors you know you know this abscess is uh, in the breast often uh, occurring like uh, le you know, next thing is the difference between the, like, uh, uh, subarular breast abscess and the mastoitis, you know. You know, the abscesses in the breast uh, often occur, these, uh, uh, which occur uh, in the lactating women, you know, which means that the who are breastfeeding, you know, they are known as mastoitis, you know. And it's an infection, you know, that causes the swelling and the redness, uh, in the breast area, you know, 
and uh, that's one uh, among the other symptoms you know and mastitis can occur when a milk duct becomes clogged you know and if uh, it's left untreated it can lead to the abscess in the breast you know and uh, the subalveolar abscess involves the nipple tissue and the uh, or uh, like uh, alveolar glands you know and they usually occur in the young and the middle aged women who are not lactating now next thing is the diagnosis you know you know if you have the symptom of this condition uh, and you approach to your doctor you know he will uh, perform he will ask you the history of the medical conditions uh, of this medical condition you know and uh, ask you about the symptoms and uh, then he will perform the physical examination or you know as the breast examination you know uh, to see that lump you know he will palpate that lump and uh, uh, he will see if any pus may be coming out you know and uh, in that case he will collect a sample and send it to the lab you know uh, so what type of infection you have you know and your doctor may need to know exactly what kind of the bacteria are causing your infection. So, uh, as some bacteria are resistant to certain medications, you know. So, this is known as the culture test, you know. And uh, this will, will help your doctor to oh, choose the right treatment or the right antibiotic for you, you know. And the blood test may also be ordered to look for the infection and to check your uh, immunity, you know. And then your doctor may order the ultrasound of your breast and uh, uh, to see the structures under the skin which are being infected you know any growths and any abnormalities in the uh, that uh, particular area you know and uh, for the further if needed you know he may advise the MRI especially for severe or the recurrent infections you know uh, uh, to pinpoint the reasons you know and once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options, you know? Well, the first stage of the treatment is taking the antibiotics. So depending on the size of that abscess and the level of discomfort, you know, your doctor may also want to open up the abscess to drain the pus, you know? And uh, this would mean that abscess would be cut open in the doctor's office, you know? And most likely some local anesthetic will be used to numb the area before the NCL, you know? And uh, if the infection does not go away with uh, the course of, uh, of the two or uh, of the antibiotics, you know, in that case, the infection comes back repeatedly uh, after the initially cleaning up, you know. So you may need surgery in that case, you know. And the, during the surgery, the chronic abscess and the, any infected glands will be removed. And if uh, the nipple inversion has occurred, you know, the nipple can be reconstructed during the surgery, you know. And the surgery may be done if your doctor in the doctor's office, you know, and then the surgical outpatient center, you know, and maybe in a hospital, you know, and depending on the size and the severity of the abscess, you know. So these are the treatment options once you're uh, diagnosed with uh, this condition, you know. And uh, the next thing is uh, about the possible complications, you know. You know, the abscess and the infections can. Uh, recur even after you have been treated with the antibiotics you know and the surgery may be required to remove the affected glands to in order to prevent the recurrence you know and uh, the nipple inversion can occur and your nipple and the roller can also be deformed or maybe pushed off center by the abscess you know causing the like uh, cosmetic damage you know or affecting the looks you know and even if the infection is successfully treated with antibiotics, uh, it can happen even that, you know. And uh, there are surgical solutions to these complications, you know. And the most cases, the nipple problems or the abscess don't indicate the breast cancer, you know. And uh, any infection in the woman who is uh, not breastfeeding has the potential to be a rare form of the breast cancer. Uh, okay, so... If you have these kind of abscesses or any infection, you should consult your doctor for further evaluation. And uh, generally the outlook is uh, good, you know, and uh, most of abscesses are treated with antibiotics success successfully and, uh, and by having the abscess drained, you know. And sometimes uh, recurring or severe infections require surgery, okay.
And most of the time, surgery is successful in preventing the sepsis and the infection from returning back, you know. So the prognosis generally is good, you know. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.